It's episode 11 of my career mode and the breaking point story. So for this episode, at the Belgian Grand Prix, it's Spa Francochamps. See, I took a 60 grid place penalty for putting all new equipment into the car. So I start dead last in the field out of the 22 cars. And, and yeah, it's always carnage going into a La Source. Welcome along then to the Belgian Grand Prix, the race that gave us the maiden victory for the Jordan team in 1998. And in the same team, the phenomenal debut of a young Michael Schumacher. There's always something special around one of the many corners of this fan favorite circuit. Spa Francorchamps today, a circuit that spans 4.35 miles. There are tons of elevation changes along the way too. 19 corners making up this circuit with nine of those to the right and the remaining 10 to the left. This track is a great one for fans of pure speed. The average lap speed comes close to a whopping 145 miles an hour. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. So, let's briefly discuss Lewis Hamilton. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Bottas, Daniel Ricciardo, and Perez, Gasly, Leclerc, Sainz, and Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Vettel, Lance Stroll, and Raikkonen, Ocon, Giovinazzi, Mick Schumacher, and George Russell. Mazepin, Latifi, Delatrav, and Ferd. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. All right. See, so yeah, I'll stick with the strategy that the engineers gave me. So I feel comfy with it. Let's see what I can do from the back here. And it's lights out, and away we go in Belgium. I know Louis is going to be aggressive on blocking. I know that for sure. That's always chaos going into the source. All right, I can tuck in behind Antonio here. Now I'm going to have to get out of the gas going, going through Radion because I have the car completely trimmed out. And then and the car is going to get really light in the rear, especially going going through Radion because of the extreme bumps in the game. I kind of feel like EA and Codemasters kind of went overkill on the bumps here a little bit. But yeah, with a really, but yeah, with a completely trimmed out car, the car is going to get really, really light in the rear, especially, especially in some of the really bumpy parts of the circuit. However, with a completely trimmed out car, this thing's going to go really fast on the straights. So it should be able to keep up with these guys on the straightaways. I know that for sure. to lift going through Radion because again with a with a trimmed out completely trimmed out car car is going to get really 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 light in the rear over the bumps 
And of course, I'm behind a bunch of other cars. The car is going to lose downforce too, so I have to be really, really careful going through Radion. to catch up to Antonio here and then might be able to probably outbreak him going into the chicane, the bus stop chicane. Yeah, he went a little wide there. He's got to try blocking, but I'll try to send it into the corner to get him to lift. Good. Good job. Nice overtake. We can now use DRS. DRS now available. I mean, car just gets so light over the rear. Car just gets really rear light in the rear there. I just gotta be, I just gotta hang on to the car because that thing might go around on me in a snap. the pit window you'll be on the hard scap the teammate behind is 4.2 seconds I don't want to be on hards that's what I mean you know the bumps are just so intense over Radion. yeah I want to there's static over the radio, say again. Yeah, I'm trying to get him to see if he can change this. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I don't want to go on the hards. Because my crew will blew it again like they did. Like they did in... In... I uh, forget where it was. Where they blew it on the strategy call and it cost me. It was a really dumb decision going on hards there. Because you knew the hard... Hard compound tire is the slowest tire. Even though it lasts the longest. The hard compounds aren't really needed at all. For the race. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know what the crew guys are thinking. Like I, yeah, I gotta be so careful going through Radion because the car gets so light in the rear. So the car in its current state really just can't go full throttle through Radion. So yeah, sadly I have to use a flashback there. So. That's what I mean, these bumps are just, ugh, these stinking bumps. These darn bumps are just so intense. Yeah, these bumps really are, these bumps are really messing with the car so much where I just can't really go. I really wish I could go full throttle through through Radion there, but I just can't because the car just gets so light in the rear. Yeah, the car just doesn't have the aero upgrades and the chassis upgrades to really handle those bumps as well. If I know in due time when the car gets those necessary upgrades, the car will be a lot better over the bumps. Some information on Mazepin. They seem to have an issue. Front is 2.4 seconds. just has so much more power than this Renault engine does. The Salfa Romeo have a better car, so... Nothing I could really do there in terms of defense. But maybe I might be able to get him back, though. Five laps of fuel remaining. Yeah, unfortunately, pit stop wasn't that good there. I actually had a 2.3 second stop, but unfortunately, it got delayed because of the other cars coming out. Either way, see if I can catch Raikkonen and Ocon. See if I can get up to those two.
waiting for his stop. Cut out ahead of Antonio. So that's good. Got out ahead of Giovinazzi, so that's good. Try to get around me, but he's gonna have a really difficult time doing that. Four laps of fuel remaining. I really feel I could catch Raikkonen because I've been lapping a little bit quicker than him. So see if I can maybe gain on him and get around him. All right, purple. We're leading our teammate by 14.0 seconds. Take him going into Lake Combe. All right, got him. Great maneuver. You made it look easy. Let's see if I can go real in Ocon now. You're catching the car ahead, but remember we need to get to the end of the race on these tires. Yeah, you don't need to tell you don't need to tell me, Jeff. I know what I'm doing. Now don't bother me. I'm trying to drive here. Two laps of fuel left. That'll be enough to get to the end. So I'm pretty good on fuel. I 
Lando Norris that's fastest lap of the race. Last lap. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. Yeah, I didn't want to do that, but unfortunately, like I said, the bumps are just so extreme over Radion and I had to hang on to the car there. So I didn't want the car to crash. all messed up. Yep, Lando sets fastest lap of the race, and he takes the win. That'll make my dad happy. So my dad's favorite driver is Lando Norris. Yep, Lando, the Twitch streamer and YouTube personality. Yep, I'll finish P15. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Come on, I got driver of the day. What a fantastic Grand Prix that was, and an excellent win for McLaren. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. Our winning drivers are on their way to the podium right now. It's been a fantastic race for McLaren, that's for sure and no doubt they'll be celebrating tonight. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. It wasn't the best weekend for our championship leader, and their advantage at the top has been reduced. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Anthony Davidson, who do you pick? I have to give it to Bird. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive indeed. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Yeah, it came, started dead last, finished 15th. And Louis finishes down in 22nd. Yeah. But yeah, that was good. Unfortunately, I didn't finish the ahead of Ocon. really seem to enjoy that. It made it look easy. How do you feel these grid penalties are affecting the sport? Uh, I don't blame the team for nothing. The team do an awesome job. We all underestimated you, didn't we? Yeah. That was a close finish. How are things between the two of you? Uh... You left a lot of paint on the walls today. Were you struggling for grip, or did you just misjudge some corners? Eh. Not your business. So yeah, not any of your business. Yeah, 
Yeah, so unfortunately no uh unfortunately no money from the sponsors. That's a shame. Meanwhile, at team headquarters. I should have enough money to renew Louis's contract. Yep. And the Dutch Grand Prix. Now I think um Louis, I think is good, right? Yeah, seven days. But yeah, Louis, I have enough money to pay him to stay aboard the team. So he should be okay. And then for the Dutch Grand Prix, I'll go ahead and put back in. I'll put the um, I'll put the old engine back in. Put the old components in for Zandvoort, because Zandvoort, as you know, isn't really a power track. So I won't need any anything else. But yeah, I'll put the we the uh, used equipment and stuff in. Let's see what it, um, improvements I can do to the car. Okay. Yeah, so I got something being developed right now, so at least that's what I think. Okay. Yeah. Just looking to see if I have what I I don't really remember what I have. Oh yeah, the reliability testing, and then I still have the combustion chamber, and then yep, so I got this. So I definitely will want to upgrade the roll dampers. I know that for sure. So I have a much much better chassis. That'll really help the car, especially over the bumps, and then the wing flaps. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I do need enough money though for Louis. So I think he needs a million dollars. I think no, one and a half million. All right, so I'll have to save some. I'll have to save my money before I do anything. Although there is one thing I actually can do: I can upgrade um, the analysis suite. And that'll help out. That'll help him out a little bit. Alright, so yeah, and then um, definitely want to um, Yeah, definitely want to build on the tur the team, obviously. And just go ahead and advance the time. Our new parts have completed without issue. Excellent. They'll be on the car ready for the next race weekend. All right, so yeah, in the next episode, we'll be doing the Dutch Grand Prix. All right, that's off to chapter 11 in the Breaking Point story. So that's good. The upgrades successfully worked. We're able to come in, so that's good. All right, so yeah, now I want to do chapter 11 of the Breaking Point storyline. Yeah, that was from the previous episode. Unfortunately, the fight between Casper and 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 um, Aiden. But yeah, getting both perspectives, you could kind of see what their personas are in a way. Yeah. All right. So yeah, let's go ahead and head to the Austrian Grand Prix. Temperature, Casper? Is, is the safety car for Aiden? Aiden's had to come in. Now's a good time to catch up with the field. Yeah, I'm trying. See, to catch up before the safety car goes into the pits. <laughs> Oh, 
there's the cue. You hurry and catch up. Car just get car just gets so much understeer in some of these parts. The car just does not want to turn in some of the parts. Word, Casper. Push for ten. See if you can salvage some points. Yeah. Safety car in this lap. Let's make sure those tires are up to temperature and remember there is no overtaking until the timing line. Stay in position until the green flags. on the battery charge, especially coming up. Yeah, car just gets so darn tight in the corners there. You're lapping around a second faster than the car ahead. Keep this up. guys in front of me.
you're in the top ten. Trying to see if I can get around Daniel Ricardo and Sergio Perez. But at least the, the thing is, is that I'm safely into the points, so could just hold station if I want. But to be honest, really, it's more fun when you actually pass more cars. laps of fuel remaining. Yeah, it went three wide there going into the corner and I was able to overtake both Ricardo. It's able to overtake both Ricardo and Perez, so that's good. The Casper up to P5. Which makes my safety blanket much better. is 4.8 seconds. Be aware we expect the grip levels to start falling away soon. I didn't even hit Daniel. Yeah, I, di I didn't even hit him. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I didn't get into Daniel there. I don't know why it thing gave me a warning there for collision, but I didn't even hit Daniel.
We have two laps of fuel remaining. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. Should be able to hold off Perez for P5. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Ackerman's done well to finish in the points there, in stark contrast to his ass teammate Aiden Jackson, who at didn't even finish. Yeah, Jackson's looked off the pace all weekend. His performance just isn't where it should be. You can see the odd error creeping in on track too. Well, if you believe the rumors, the Haas camp is not the happiest of places right now. Yeah, and that can affect even the most experienced of drivers. I just hope Jackson gets his act together. He's a promising talent and he's much better than this. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. work out there today. Let's have your thoughts. Today's race certainly had its ups and downs for you, Casper. Are you pleased with that performance? Yeah, it wasn't easy today. I somehow kept finding myself in the wrong place at the wrong time, so really happy to salvage some points. The safety car gave me a good opportunity to turn things around. Pretty pleased overall, yeah. Speaking of the safety car, Devin Butler has gone on record calling you lucky to get the result you did. Did luck come into it today? I'm not going to comment on what Devin has to say, but safety cars change races. It's just one of those things that's going to help you on the day or not. Thankfully, it went our way today. Teammate Aidan Jackson was forced to retire today. Would you say he's going through a bit of a rough patch? I'm not here to talk about Aiden. You'll have to ask him about that. Great. Well, that's everything. Actually, I got a top five finish with Casper. There are Brian Cass are you busy? Well, actually look I need you to come to the office. Can you pop by now? Why what's going on? Nothing nothing. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it when you get here Can't you just tell me now? Thanks so much Casper really appreciate it
rewards I got. Okay. So yeah. Moving on to chapter 12. Casper. What's going on? We need to clear something up. Take a seat. Clear what up? Aiden thinks it's his fault that you're retiring. I'm sorry, Casper. I do respect you. Quite a lot, in fact. And I don't want you to retire. I didn't mean the things that I said. And I want you to know that if you're retiring because of me, I'll... <laughs> Will you tell him? This anxiety... It's no good for his performance. I'm not retiring because of you. Everyone says... I'm not retiring because of you. Can I go now? No. You're going to give him two minutes of your time. Well, Brian, what am I? His therapist. Two minutes, Casper. That's all. Everyone says... Everyone's an idiot. I'm not retiring because of you. I told Brian after Zandvoort. I'm sorry you found out the way you did. It's tough. Yeah, it can be. The press, social media. I don't know. How do you deal with it all? in the whole world get to do what we do yeah a handful you deal with it by never forgetting how lucky you are to be here you understand never forget hey Casper yeah do you ever forget Sometimes. Sometimes we all do. sympathy it's Sunday and that means it's race time here in Spa as the cars are being prepared let's join them trackside for the start of the Belgian Grand Prix Spa Francorchamps then a historic 19 corner circuit with a lap distance of 4.35 miles there's over a hundred meters of elevation change here and with long stretches of the lap spent flat out a good top speed will be vital for success With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he starts from pole position. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Bottas, Norris, Sergio Perez, and Ricardo, Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Sainz, and Lance Stroll, Sonoda, Ackerman, Esteban Ocon and Butler, Jackson, Giovinazzi, Sebastian Vettel and Pierre Gasly, Russell and Kimi Raikkonen finishes off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. All right. So yeah, it's going to start and then it's the rain's going to then come down. But yeah, we'll take care of this in the next episode. So yeah, see so I gotta finish in the top five, but that'll be on the next episode of the Breaking Point story. So.
Yeah. So a little sympathy for for Aiden, does Casper feel? Hmm. All right. So either way, thanks for watching, and I will be back with the next episode. See you guys later. Bye.